l'administratrice en chef de la santé publique. Ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone. Si vous désirez poser une question, appuyez sur étoile 1. Passez à la séance d'information. Let's begin today's briefing. Over to you, Dr. Tam. Thank you very much, and bonjour à toutes et à tous. Together, uh, so today, we will provide the latest update on the national epidemiology and modeling work that informs the ongoing management of COVID-19 in Canada. Since the previous update at the end of July, the Delta-driven wave has continued to accelerate along the strong resurgence trajectory. This is a crucial moment. We have a window of opportunity to rapidly accelerate vaccine uptake and close the protection gap in younger age groups with the lowest vaccine coverage. As we head into the Labor Day weekend and return to more indoor activities this fall, Canadians, whether fully vaccinated or not, are urged to maintain layers of personal protection, including masking and spacing, to protect themselves and others while helping to dampen the impact of the growing Delta wave. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Aujourd'hui, nous ferons le point sur les travaux d'épidémiologie et de modélisation effectués au pays qui oriente la gestion continue de la COVID-19 au Canada. Depuis la précédente mise à jour à la fin de juillet, la vague provoquée par le variant Delta poursuit son accélération en suivant la trajectoire de forte recrudescence. Le moment est crucial. Nous avons maintenant l'occasion d'accélérer rapidement le taux de vaccination et de réduire le déficit de protection dans les groupes d'âge plus jeunes où la couverture vaccinale est la plus faible. Alors que nous entrons dans le week-end de la fête du travail, et retournerons à plus d'activités à l'intérieur cet automne, nous demandons aux Canadiens, qu'ils soient entièrement vaccinés ou non, de maintenir les mesures de protection individuelle, notamment le port de masque et la distanciation, afin de se protéger et de protéger les autres, tout en aidant à atténuer l'impact de la vague Delta qui prend de l'ampleur. Since the previous modeling update, average daily case counts have increased rapidly from just over 640 per day nationally to almost 3,500 per day. Severe and critical illness trends that had been decreasing are once again on the rise. The latest seven-day average for the number of people with COVID-19 being treated in our hospitals each day has more than doubled since the last update to over 1,200 daily. Of these, on average, more than 440 were being treated in intensive care units, and there were an average of 13 deaths reported daily. Diapositive 2. Après des semaines d'une tendance à la baisse du taux d'occupation des hôpitaux et des unités de soins intensifs, certaines provinces et territoires commencent à signaler une hausse, mais il est encore trop tôt pour déterminer dans quelle mesure la vaccination pourrait réduire le profil de sévérité de la COVID-19. Cela s'explique en partie par le fait que les complications graves dans les hospitalisations sont, décla sont décalées par rapport à l'activité de la maladie, de sorte que nous ne pouvons pas encore dire à quoi ressemblera le profil de sévérité dans les semaines à venir. Les différences régionales subsistent quand au niveau d'activité de la maladie, notamment dans certaines régions, où le virus est en recrudescence, ce qui pourrait avoir de lourdes répercussions sur les systèmes de santé et augmenter considérablement les admissions en soins intensifs. Dans les régions plus fortement touchées, il est possible que des mesures strictes soient nécessaires pour réduire la propagation si une augmentation des formes graves de la maladie compromet la capacité des soins critiques. Slide three, more than 53 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered across Canada since vaccination began in mid-December, providing over 84% of the eligible population aged 12 years or older with at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine, and 77% are fully vaccinated. Covering this last stretch to reach very high vaccine coverage across all eligible age groups 
could prove crucial to reduce the impact of the Delta-driven wave. While rapidly increasing vaccine uptake, including for first doses, will require public health and communities to urgently accelerate targeted approaches that reduce barriers, provide support, and reach people where they are. Everything from mobile clinics and drop-in access to more locations, information, language and cultural outreach resources can make a difference to getting more of the population informed, confident and protected. Nevertheless, where there are pockets of under-vaccinated people, there is an ongoing risk of rapid community spread, high numbers of hospitalization and potential for emergence of new variants of concern. Diapositive 4. Bien que la couverture vaccinale ait augmenté dans les différents groupes d'âge avec 80, 88% et à 94% des personnes de 60 ans et plus qui sont entièrement vaccinées, le record à la vaccination a ralenti chez les groupes d'âge plus jeunes. Bien que les personnes plus jeunes soient en général moins gravement malades de la COVID-19, l'infection peut quand même entraîner une forme sévère ou de longue durée quel que soit le groupe d'âge, et de récentes données indiquent que le variant Delta cause une forme plus sévère de la maladie que les variants antérieurs. L'objectif ultime est de vacciner entièrement le plus tôt possible le plus grand nombre possible de personnes admissibles afin de leur offrir une forte protection contre les formes symptomatiques et sévères de la maladie. Il y a encore près de 7,6 millions de Canadiens admissibles qui ne sont pas encore entièrement vaccinés. C'est pourquoi nous devons dès maintenant accroître rapidement la couverture vaccinale afin de protéger autant de personnes que possible. Slide 5. When you are vaccinated, you reduce your risk of serious illness, hospitalization and death due to COVID-19. Remember, vaccines take time to work, and it typically takes about two weeks following the second dose for the immune system to build up protection. What is most encouraging is that vaccination is proving to be highly protective against severe illness. In recent weeks, from July the 18th to August the 14th, the average weekly rate of new cases in the unvaccinated was 12 times higher than in the fully vaccinated while the rate of hospitalized cases was 36 times higher in unvaccinated compared to fully vaccinated. This aligns well with vaccine effectiveness studies that demonstrate strong protection against severe illness in vaccinated people. As well, based on close monitoring of the use of COVID-19 vaccines across Canada and worldwide, we know the vaccines are very safe and that vaccination remains our best protection against COVID-19, including the Delta variant. Diapositive 6. Cette mise à jour des prévisions à long terme montre comment la trajectoire de l'épidémie pourrait évoluer jusqu'à la mi-septembre. Il semble indiquer que la quatrième vague provoquée par le variant Delta continuera d'enfler. Selon le modèle mis à jour, si nous continuons sur la voie que nous avons empruntée et puis la réouverture, nous pourrions assister à une poursuite de la hausse marquée des cas qui suivrait la trajectoire de la ligne gris foncée et atteindrait des niveaux sans précédent au Canada depuis le début de la pandémie. Nous nous attendons à ce que les cas surviennent essentiellement au sein de la population non vaccinée et un volume élevé de cas pourrait finir par entraîner une augmentation des taux de forme grave de la maladie et d'hospitalisation. Cela est dû au fait que, selon les niveaux actuels et prévus de vaccination, le bassin des personnes non vaccinées est toujours relativement grand et le taux de contact suffisamment élevé pour que le virus circule facilement. Cependant, si nous prenions toutes les dispositions nécessaires à la réduction de la propagation, par exemple l'application constante des mesures de protection personnelle et des mesures de santé publique, nous pourrions ramener la courbe épidémique à la hauteur de la trajectoire de la ligne violette. Ces prévisions confirment encore une fois, alors que les cas continuent d'augmenter, l'importance pour nous pour nous de demeurer vigilants et réactifs, ainsi que la nécessité de prendre des mesures visant à limiter la propagation. Slide 7. 
updated complex modeling scenarios accounting for factors like increased number of contacts with easing of public health measures, vaccine uptake, and impacts of the Delta variant continue to show that we could experience a large resurgence this fall and winter. Unfortunately, with the earlier than expected reopening and the current slowed rate of vaccine uptake, Delta variant spread has accelerated quickly. The scenario on the left shows that there is a risk that hospital capacity could be exceeded by the Delta-driven resurgence. However, there is still a window of opportunity to reduce the rate of epidemic growth and get on a better trajectory. By increasing vaccine uptake among adults age 18 to 39 years and speeding up the overall rate of vaccination, the scenario on the right shows that we could dampen the resurgence to significantly reduce the risk of overwhelming hospital capacity. Considering younger age groups continue to have the highest rates of infection and are the most mobile and socially active across a wide range of work, recreational and educational environments, Increasing and accelerating vaccine uptake could have a substantial impact to reduce disease transmission, lower the number of people with severe illness requiring hospitalization. The bottom line is that millions of people across Canada remain unvaccinated and at high risk of COVID-19 infection and severe illness outcomes. There is still time to get vaccinated to protect yourself and others in your community while helping to preserve our healthcare capacity through the fall and winter. Dear Positive Wit, the Canada has made progress remarkable in matter of coverture vaccinale. Cependant, compte tenu du fait que nous passerons bientôt plus de temps à l'intérieur, les modèles les plus récents montrent qu'il est urgent que davantage de personnes de 18 à 39 ans soient vaccinées et que le taux global de vaccination augmente. Alors que plus de 53 millions de doses de vaccins ont été administrés au Canada et que plus de 25 millions de Canadiens ont été entièrement vaccinés, les données probantes continuent de montrer que les vaccins contre la COVID-19 sont sûrs et efficaces pour réduire les formes graves de la maladie, y compris les hospitalisations attribuables à la COVID-19. La vaccination plus rapide d'un plus grand nombre de personnes admissibles pourrait contribuer à ralentir considérablement la résurgence de la maladie causé par le variant Delta qui se propage rapidement tout en étant plus grave et ainsi protéger les capacités en matière de soins de santé et réduire les perturbations pour la société. 12, 12 500 000 Canadiens ont besoin d'une meilleure protection, incluant ceux qui ne sont pas encore vaccinés, ceux qui doivent encore recevoir leur deuxième dose et les enfants trop jeunes pour être vaccinés. Si vous êtes parent de jeunes enfants, qui ne sont pas encore admissibles à la vaccination, le meilleur moyen de les, de les protéger et de leur permettre de retourner à l'école et aux activités qu'ils aiment et de vous faire, vac et de vous faire vacciner et d'encourager les autres à le faire. Quel que soit notre statut vaccinal, le fait de passer l'automne et l'hiver à l'intérieur signifie également qu'il faut continuer de se protéger, notamment en portant un masque et en gardant ses distances, et de prendre des précautions comme rester à la maison en cas de symptômes. Merci. Thank you, Mick Rich. So slide you, eight. Um, Canada has made significant progress in increasing vaccine coverage. But as we had endorsed this fall, the latest modeling shows the urgent need to get more 18 to 39-year-olds vaccinated and speed up the overall rate of vaccination. With more than 53 million vaccines given across Canada and more than 25 million Canadians fully vaccinated, evidence continues to show that COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective in reducing serious illness, including hospitalizations due to COVID-19. So getting more eligible people vaccinated faster could have a significant impact to slow the rapidly spreading and more severe Delta-driven resurgence to protect healthcare capacity and reduce societal disruption. 12.5 million Canadians need better protection, including those who are not yet vaccinated, those who still need their second dose, and children too young to be vaccinated. For parents of young children not yet eligible for vaccination, 
getting yourself vaccinated and encouraging others who are eligible is the best way to protect them and get them back to school and the things they love, regardless of our vaccination status. An indoor fall and winter also means maintaining layers of protection, including masking and spacing, and taking precautions like staying at home if you develop any symptoms. So thank you, merci, Megwich. Now, thank you, doctors. Uh, we will now open the phone line to a uh, question. Uh, as usual, we ask that you limit yourself to one question and only one follow-up. We'll be taking questions in both official languages. Donc, nous prenons maintenant les questions. Comme d'habitude, nous vous demandons de vous limiter à une question et une question de suivi seulement. Et comme d'habitude, vous pouvez vous poser vos questions dans l'une des deux langues officielles. Donc, opérateur, over to you. Thank you. Merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile maintenant pour poser une question. And the first question is from Mia Robson, the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, yes. Uh, good good uh, afternoon, Dr. Tam. I'm just wondering if you could explain a little bit more, I guess it's page seven, um, about immediate acceleration of vaccine uptake. What kind of, of, of vaccine rate do you think we need to see in order to slow the Delta, Delta, variant, uh, Delta variant impact uh, in, in Canada? Thank you for that question. And yes, this is the more complex modeling. And so these are numerous scenarios that gets put into a computer. And um, but really, um, there's there's a bunch of footnotes which are probably a bit microscopic for you to read. But uh, we do um, in 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 those modeling scenarios, uh, we're looking at um, certainly over 80 percent coverage in that eligible population as fast as possible. By as fast as possible, I do mean like you know, I would love that to be done by Labor Day, and but you know we've only got a few few days left. But um, as fast as possible after that, but it's you know at the same time never too late. But because of how fast the Delta driven, um, mostly Delta driven um, cases are escalating, particularly in the west of the country, the window of opportunity to make that impact is definitely narrowing. So really, there's no set time period, but uh, really as soon as possible, because the moment you get people back indoors um, to, to access all those important essential things that we need to do, uh, we will see uh, accelerations. So we've got, you know, not, not very much time, but any, any bit helps and any speed would help. Thanks. And I just wonder if you could clarify for that whether you mean 80% fully or, or first doses. But I'd also like to ask about booster shots. The, the two mRNA manufacturers have now submitted data to the U.S. Uh, on the benefits of booster shots. What impact could booster shots have in Canada on slowing the rate of Delta? Thank you. And if you look at slide four, um, what we're pointing out is a gap in the 18 to 39 year uh, group in particular. The adolescent age group, the youth, uh, uh, in that age group, the 12 to 17 is actually accelerating fairly fast. But for the younger adults who are, you know, mo this is a big population too, in terms of age cohort, they have a significant ways to go. So they, in, in that age group, um, I'm talking about fully vaccinated. And they're at about 63 to 68% fully vaccinated. Uh, so it is a tall order to get up to 80% um, in the next days. But I think we need to give it a good go. And for the provinces where the acceleration hasn't been as fast, they may have a bit more time. Uh, for others, um, it is really as fast as possible. So 80% overall. And there's no magic number except to say, reach for the stars. As I've always said, I have a 100% mark on that graph. Um, that's where people should be aiming towards as much as possible. Uh, at the same time, it's actually really, really amazing that in Canada, we've got this far with, with where we, we're at. And I think we can do this. Um, I, I believe that we can, we can accelerate, and I know that provinces are pulling out all stops in, in different ways. So in terms of boosters, um, there are different kinds of 
um, categories, I would say, of additional vaccine doses that we have to examine. Uh, the National Advisory Committee on Immunizations meeting right at this moment to examine the data. As is a regulator, uh, examining the data submission from manufacturers on an additional dose for those who are immunocompromised. And for that, um, that group of individuals, I expect the recommendations to come shortly. And we don't actually consider that additional dose a booster. It, they, this is a group that may not have responded well to two doses to start off with. So that's an additional dose in that series. But even then, um, you know, some of the individuals in that group are not going to be well protected, maybe even after three doses. And so all the other measures uh, to um, layers of protection still pertain to people at high risk, like masking. Um, then there's a next group, um, part of the general population, but those who are the most seniors living in congregate settings, such as long-term care. And that's a very specific group because they're very high risk. Their immune system is not as robust, so they may not have generated as high uh, uh, immune response or antibody levels at the first go. And so uh, that will be examined. But um, you know, while that's, that is being rapidly um, analyzed, uh, I would um, just ask uh, caution and patience for a boost of those for the rest of the population because we haven't um, seen enough data and based on the information we have at hand in Canada, uh, we're not seeing a lot of breakthrough infections. And um, infections aside, um, vaccines are really extraordinarily effective, even against hospitalizations by the Delta variant. And so I think um, key focus right now must be on getting the first and second doses into people who have not been vaccinated, that will make more of a difference to a Delta-driven wave. A third layer of protection, a third dose, for example, to those other groups uh, may help them protect themselves. Um, but without bridging that gap in the younger adult population, um, I don't expect a significant impact on that wave. Thank you, Dr. Tam. After the next question, prochaine question. Thank you, merci. The next question is from Kristen H. Kute from CTV National News. Please go ahead. Hey, Dr. Tam, thanks for taking our question. Uh, the first question I have is, do you regret not giving any regular updates during this time? And don't you think you have a responsibility to provide the public with these crucial updates during this election and this fourth wave? Well, I think I'm really happy to be uh, providing the modeling uh, and EPI update today. And then we had some very uh, specific data that we wanted to share, which I felt to be very important to do so before we head into the long weekend, the Labor Day long weekend, and when people start going back to school and, and work and other things. So th to me, this is a, a great timing to be interacting with all of you. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I have provided many different channels of communication, including um, published statements um, and social media, and nasty statements have been out. So, um, but, the, you know, the epidemic trajectory right now is one where I think it's the opportune moment uh, to interact with, with all of you in this kind of fora. And I expect, I think, given where the epidemic is heading, um, I expect to be providing uh, regular briefings to all of you and, and having this opportunity moving forwards. Thank you. Follow up. And with regards to today's announcement, Dr. Tam, you said there is an ongoing risk of rapid community spread with the Delta variant continues to grow at an accelerated rate. You're calling for stronger measures to reduce spread. Should people be gathering at this time for group events? And more specifically, should people be gathering in the groups we are seeing during the Reader's Campaign Stop? Yes, I think, um, you know, depending on where you are in the country, you must um, keep updated with the um, disease activity within the context of that gathering. Um, but given where, um, you know, how quickly the uh, virus is spreading in some areas of the country. 
uh, you have to be really careful. Some of my colleagues have already um, put in some more restrictions in the size of gatherings. Um, for example, in certain areas of British Columbia. So you have to observe uh, those public health um, um, guidance and um, direction. And so I expect everyone, and it doesn't matter what you're gathering to do, uh, you have to observe public health, local public health advice. At the same time, more broadly speaking, I think right now is not the time to gather in huge numbers with people that uh, not within your household uh, without taking a significant layers of protection and knowing what you're heading into. Uh, we do have um, tools that are linked to our website that helps people uh, assess the situation based on their own um, health risks, as well as the risk of the setting that they're about to head into. And I just suggest everybody do that. And um, personally, I would recommend layering on the mask and keeping uh, some distance between others as much as you can possibly do, especially indoors. Thank you, Doctor. Opera, next question. Thank you, merci. La prochaine question, Annie Guillemette, Cogeco Nouvelle, 98.5 FM. À vous la parole. Bonjour, merci de m'accorder la première question en français depuis le début euh, de cette période-là. Euh, J'ai été beaucoup frappée par votre phrase qui disait que les nombres de nouveaux cas pourraient atteindre des niveaux jamais vus. Euh, comment on peut expliquer ça aux citoyens qui se font vacciner, qui respectent les mesures depuis le début euh, de, de cette pandémie-là? Euh, avec, euh, Je comprends que le delta est fort, là, mais comment on peut garder l'adhésion de la population avec des prévisions aussi... Euh, aussi importante que ça et qui pourrait faire peur aux gens. Merci pour la question, c'est Dr. New. C'est une bonne question. Ce qu'on dit maintenant et ce qu'on voit, voit aussi avec les, les données probantes, c'est oui, il y a aussi une augmentation, augmentation avec le nombre de cas. Et la plupart de, 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 des cas, c'est parmi les, les personnes non vaccinées. Ça, ça c'est vraiment un, un enjeu actuel et c'est pourquoi on, on encourage à on continue à encourager tout le monde à se faire vacciner avec une première dose et une deuxième dose. Mais parmi les, les, les personnes qui sont déjà vaccinées, les données probantes aussi démontrent qu'il y a une bonne protection contre des, des, des symptômes graves aussi, les hospitalisations. Donc, c'est sûr, il n'y a aucun vaccin qui est 100 efficace, mais avec le vaccin, ça donne une forte protection contre des, les, les, les conséquences graves et les hospitalisations. Je pense que c'est vraiment quelque chose d'important à suivre. Euh, avec, avec le, le variant Delta, mais euh, pour l'instant, c'est vraiment le, le, le même message. On a répété euh, souvent que c'est très important de se faire vacciner et le, 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 le nombre de cas, ce n'est pas exactement euh, lié comme avant euh, avec les, les, comme dit, les indicateurs tardifs comme les hospitalisations. Mais c'est quelque chose à suivre parce que euh, si on, euh, on, on regarde la, la population non vaccinée, c'est un certain segment de la population et c'est sûrement les, 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 la, la population plus jeune qui est très importante et peut-être encourager, encourager à, se à se faire vacciner parce que c'est aussi la population jeune qui est mobile aussi et peut-être avec plus de contact. Un autre aspect aussi, c'est comme on attend que le nombre de cas euh, augmente parce qu'on on est aussi dans une autre, comme on dit, Uh, phase uh, maintenant avec, uh, comme on dit, la réouverture. On ne veut pas uh, encore les, les mesures de, 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 de confinement, les mesures avant strictes, mais uh, c'est aussi quelque chose à suivre parce qu'on n'a plus de contact à chaque personne uh, maintenant parce que les, les, les magasins sont ouverts. On commence uh, peut-être à socialiser avec uh, la, la famille et les amis. C'est sûr on n'a plus de contact. Donc, c'est quelque chose aussi à peut-être uh, réfléchir que, uh, à l'échelle individuelle. Peut-être que les personnes peut-être peuvent considérer peut-être réduire le nombre de contacts, vraiment peut-être euh, avoir les contacts seulement avec une, une petite groupe d'amis, la famille aussi, euh, assurer que tout le monde euh, ait, a, a eu leurs leur deux doses de vaccin et aussi euh, peut-être aussi utiliser des autres mesures de protection individuelle comme le port de masque. Merci. Euh, Merci. Juste un... Merci euh, en, en, en suivi. Euh, Est-ce que, 
à l'heure où on se parle, vous écartez la recommandation d'un nouveau confinement? Parce que là, vous parlez de, de mesures plus prises de façon personnelle, euh, du chacun pour soi. Mais est-ce qu'une recommandation de confinement ou de mesures très strictes pourrait venir dans les semaines à venir ou c'est complètement écarté? Ah, ça, c'est vraiment une question euh, pour les, les autorités de santé publique dans, dans les provinces et territoires. C'est sûr tout le monde, nous autres ici à l'échelle fédérale, mais aussi dans toutes les provinces et euh, territoires, tout le monde regarde les données probantes de l'épidémiologie euh, très étroitement. Et euh, ce qu'on voit, qu'est-ce qui se passe euh, actuellement dans quelques provinces, par exemple la Colombie-Britannique, si le, le, le nombre de cas commence à augmenter, on, on on, on, on peut-être utilise maintenant une, une, comme dit, euh, des mesures plus ciblées, euh, peut-être pas, peut pas pour toute la province, mais peut-être pour une région. Mais euh, des fois aussi, c'est important aussi de considérer des mesures comme peut-être euh, le, le port de masse obligatoire. On voit dans chaque province et territoire, le contexte et les situations sont peut-être un peu différentes, mais c'est sûr que les, les autorités sont prêtes, si c'est nécessaire, d'ajuster les, les mesures de santé publique. Merci, Dr. Nou. Opérateur, prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. Sophia Harris, from CBC News. Please go ahead. Um, Canada is opening its borders to fully vaccinated um, uh, travelers from all countries on September 7th. Any concerns about doing this, uh, considering Canada is entering a fourth uh, COVID wave? This is um, Theresa Tam here. So, um, We have, of course, many layers of measures um, in, in, as it pertains to the borders. And just a reminder that, of course, we've uh, eased the borders for fully vaccinated U.S. citizens and um, in, in relation to um, discretionary travel. And we're about to do that for um, other countries. And it's for fully vaccinated individuals and In fact, people who've had the same vaccines as the ones authorized by Health Canada. Um, and so with that in mind, we still have added on layers of protection, including a pre-departure um, test. We will still be testing uh, for surveillance purposes, even fully vaccinated travelers, um, to give us a sense of whether there's Um, any specific uh, importations or variants of concern, that will continue as well. And we give guidance to those individuals to uh, wear a mask and do other public health measures and observe local public health advice. So with all these layers um, um, at play, um, this is why the, um, the continuation of the uh, planned easing uh, is taking place. What I'm, um, you know, really um, stress is that we, we have an ability to look at the testing and the test positivity rates at, on arrival. So that day one test on arrival test is giving us a lot of information. And the U.S., remember, is um, the country where we have the largest numbers of travelers. And they have a Delta-driven wave as well and many different cases, and yet the positivity rate from those incoming travelers has remained very low. And we will continue to monitor that. And should there be any signals of an increased positivity rate, we can take further measures. Thank you. I'll put your next question. Thank you. Merci. And the next question is from Jimmy Moracher from Global News. Please go ahead. Hi, everybody. Um, I know that you did touch on this in French, but I'm just wondering if you could re reiterate it in English for us, please. Um, I know it's not completely up to you whether we see lockdowns or, or we go into different stages, but are you anticipating if we do nothing and we continue on this upward trajectory that that's a very real future for Canadians, that we will be rolling back into certain stages in certain areas or that we could even see lockdowns again. I think a lot of Canadians are really concerned about this. 
Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a uh, Dr. New, since I, I think you're referring to what I answered in French, you're right. Um, I think all of us, uh, you know, in all of the provinces and territories, and certainly Dr. Tam and myself at the federal level, are we're watching very carefully what's happening with the fourth wave. And unfortunately, you can see that, you know, the trends are in the wrong direction. Uh, cases are going up, hospitalizations and so on. And you can see that uh, in certain provinces, they've had to reinstitute uh, uh, certain measures, such as maybe the obligatory uh, use of masks and so on in public spaces. And I think it speaks to the fact that no one wants to go back into, a, as you say, lockdowns or the more severe measures that everyone remembers during the, the second and third wave. But in order to do that, uh, we can control that that future, and that gets back to vaccination. Uh, we stress time and again, uh, uh, the, the provincial uh, and territorial authorities are saying the same thing. We need to get our vaccine coverage rate as high as possible to have that really good uh, sort of a community protection against uh, the Delta variant, which is much more transmissible and causes much more severe illness compared to the original strain. And so, uh, you know, the original uh, targets that we were talking about, 75, 80 percent, where uh, we could start loosening public health measures. Now we're saying that you need to go much higher, you know, uh, shoot for the stars, go for 100 uh, percent vaccine coverage. So I think uh, especially for the young folks, as we stressed in our presentation today, uh, they're the group that's the most mobile. They probably have the, the greater uh, number of, let's say, contacts per person compared to maybe uh, those in other age groups. Uh, we can't stress enough how important it is for everyone to get vaccinated because, uh, as you can see from the data, you know, uh, the rate of, uh, of cases and then also for hospitalization is uh, many uh, times uh, amplified uh, among the non-vaccinated compared to the fully vaccinated. So if you want to avoid... Uh, uh, what we experienced in the second and third wave, especially with all of us, you know, going back inside, uh, you know, with the fall and school and the colder weather, let's get our vaccination rates up. You know, we 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 have that window of opportunity. It's never too late, but uh, let's get going. Thank yes, you, Father. Patrice Tam, um, I'll just um, maybe explain the models a little bit in that context in that, uh, for example, the dynamic modeling, the complex modeling, um, essentially, uh, if, if you look at it, that fourth wave looks bigger than the others. And that's because the modeling assumes that once restrictive public health measures and personal protective measures are lifted, they're not reimposed. So that was the assumption built into that model. But of course, we can do something about a resurgence. And I hope, and then we've seen provinces do that um, and reapply measures as needed. So just to clarify that model. If the Delta uh, variant or other transmissible variants continue to spread rapidly, and uh, provinces, particularly if they identify a risk to the healthcare capacity, they may then reimpose some of those public health measures to control spread. But I think our presentation today is to um, alert people that we can avoid that. Once again, it seems like we said the same thing last fall, but we now have vaccines as a critical tool. But we can, and we know what to do, and we can do something about it. So it may not necessarily take the form of restrictive lockdowns. Um, that's what everyone wants to avoid. But it could be targeted measures for sure. Uh, but you got to do it pretty fast. So do the targeted measures where there are higher rates and incidents so that, you know, like masking, physical distancing, some limits on your gathering size in order to keep those important social spaces and economic spaces open and avoid the lockdowns. So I think I think my take on it is that we can avoid that situation. But you can always you should always prepare uh, to be flexible, given um, everything that we've learned about this virus. Thank you, Dr. Tam. Next question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from Emily Bilodeau. La presse, la parole est à vous. Bonjour, j'aimerais ça vous entendre en français sur l'objectif de vaccination. On entend toujours parler qu'on souhaitait vacciner 75 de la population. Est-ce que cet objectif demeure ou on augmente, on aimerait ça atteindre un sommet un peu plus élevé? Oui, bonjour, c'est Dr. Nui. Merci pour la question. Oui, comme 
Puis, euh, comme il déclaré ou visé un objectif de, pour la couverture vaccinale, je pense, il y a quelques mois, c'était dans une autre situation avant à l'arrivée du variant Delta. Euh, maintenant, avec, euh, avec le, le, le variant Delta qui est beaucoup plus euh, transmissible et aussi, euh, euh, aussi euh, euh, donne des, 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 des symptômes plus graves, c'est plus important d'augmenter la couverture vaccinale. Donc, avec, euh, avec notre modélisation et aussi les, les autres facteurs en, en considération, euh, c'est sûr que tout le monde, nous autres aussi, on dit que oui, il faut augmenter euh, euh, le, le taux, le, comme dit, la couverture vaccinale. Il n'y a pas, une, une, comme il dit, une... une, une un, un chiffre exact, mais c'est sûr, comme Dr. Tam a constaté, que c'est plus, uh, plus de 80 de la population avec uh, les deux vaccins uh, pour la population éligible au moins, mais pourquoi pas uh, uh, viser vers un objectif de 100 Merci, Dr. Question suivie? Euh, C'était la seule. Merci beaucoup. Parfait, merci. Après la prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. Once again, please press star 1 if you have questions. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour toute question. And the next question is from Vic Adopia from CBC National News. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, you had referred to uh, increased public health measures. What effect would uh, vaccine certificates or passports have, do you think, in mitigating um, these worst case scenarios? Yes, hi, it's Teresa Tam. So, uh, you know, vaccine um, proof and, and these measures that provinces and territories and indeed businesses and others have um, um, announced recently, uh, they're all going towards trying to get more people vaccinated. So, and we know that by increasing vaccine coverage, and then as we've said in, in today's session, particularly in that 18 to 39 year age group, is going to help dampen that next wave. So that, uh, together with all the other things that one can do to accelerate vaccine coverage, uh, would help. Um, I have asked my colleagues to monitor the impact and, um, you know, off those um, uh, latest measures to see what difference it makes to the vaccine coverage. But so that's the bottom line is that any of those, um, um, you know, approaches to get the vaccine coverage up will make a difference. It's Dr. New. I, I would just add to, to what Dr. Tam has said is that uh, you're right. You know, what motivates people to get vaccinated? Uh, you can see that for the vast majority of Canadians, uh, just getting good information, scientific uh, information about the, the risk and benefits of the vaccine, uh, appreciating uh, how well the vaccines are working by seeing, uh, you know, the data in terms of uh, cases uh, uh, dropping, et cetera, and so on. That's enough for, for most people. But you're right. There may be uh, other motivations for other people, such as, you know, uh, well, if I, can, I can't go to a hockey game or, you know, go to a, a bar or restaurant unless I show proof of vaccination. If that's what uh, nudges them over to get vaccinated, that's great. So I think uh, we're looking, as we always say, uh, at all the, the, the range of tools in the toolbox with the ultimate goal of uh, getting as many eligible Canadians vac vaccinated as quickly as possible. Thanks. Thank you. Follow up, Nick. Uh, yeah, so we're, you know, we're into uh, early September. Getting a, a vaccine, getting a shot right now has probably never been easier. Yet, if you look at places like Saskatchewan and Alberta, which is trailing the country with the fully vaccinated, um, you know, they're just two-thirds fully vaccinated of the eligible population. I mean, what else is it going to take to get to that, you know, 85, 90% coverage that we need? I think it has to be more targeted, multifaceted approaches. So holding mass immunization clinic is no longer the approach. And depending on the community, you're going to have to tailor the approach. If we have indigenous community, it takes indigenous leaders uh, talking to each other. It takes support to get access, just make sure that there is access to the vaccine in difficult to reach places and populations. So access, I think, still remains important. The other thing is that um, some of the um, lack of vaccine confidence is related to trust. You know, populations that have traditionally been marginalized or have distrust of 
uh, institutions or governments uh, need other voices to help them uh, get the information that they need, that they trust. So um, we have been uh, supporting um, other voices, leadership and influencers who can speak to their own population because they're trusted by them, whether they're religious leaders or others. So, um, and you've, you, you mentioned yourself some of the other um, uh, approaches in terms of uh, workplace requirements. Um, from the federal perspective, of course, we have eased measures for those who are fully vaccinated for the purposes of international travel. I certainly hope that all of those things together uh, can help us get there. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's not a one size fits all. It has to be, um, you know, everything at once at this stage. Thank you, Dr. Tam. Up here, next question. Thank you. Merci. The last question is from Tom Korski from Black Locks Reporter. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tam. I, I have a bad feeling I'm not going to get my follow-up, so I'm going to ask two questions in one if that's okay. A year ago, you had predicted less than 10% of the population would be infected overall, I'm quoting. That was widely criticized at the time, you recall. We see peer-reviewed data now that it's more 50, 55% more like it. So you must have 18 months' worth of data. What is the percentage of the total population infected overall? My second question, a follow-up to CTV. I'm reading from the CMA Journal. I'm quoting Mark Johnson, a spokesman for PHAC in Health Canada, told CMAJ on August 25, the TAM wasn't taking interviews, but reporters could check back after Thanksgiving. CMAJ had also been trying since July to arrange an interview with NACI Chair Dr. Shelley Deeks about COVID-19 booster shots and vaccinations for young children, among other evolving issues. I'm almost done. Although NACI is an independent scientific advisory group, Johnson initially offered a PHAC official to speak for Deeks and later dismissed the interview request in light of the election. Uh, Dr. Tam, if you don't want to speak to reporters, that's your business. If you don't want to speak to the Canadian Medical Association, that's a big problem. What do you care if there is an election going on? I think it is very important to speak to reporters, and that's why I'm here today. So, um, no, I think that that's really critical, and we expect uh, ongoing um, interactions and be able to answer your questions. And so, isn't, so that's really important. And we're still in the middle of an election, and we are communicating with you. Um, and uh, I can't speak to the exact nature of the interactions with the CMAJ, but that's like another report as well. So I think we're, we are trying. We were trying to help in in that manner. And NACI recommendations uh, are published, and so we would like to be able to support uh, any communications that would help people. Uh, understand uh, those recommendations further, for sure. Um, in terms of, um, it, it's very interesting, your initial question, because I went back to have a look at our very initial modeling session and then uh, the predictions. And I think we are pretty much bang on with everything that we had initially estimated. With all the uncertainties that this virus has brought us, um, we have several prevalence studies, and some of them are posted. We can send you the links. Um, that some of them are done uh, by the Canadian uh, Immunize, Immunity Task Force funded projects and working with StatsCan and other community surveys. And so prevalence remains very low in Canada. And uh, even if we had under uh, tested, of course, many people perhaps with mild illness and perhaps even asymptomatic uh, don't get tested. But in a thorough prevalence study, when you're studying the antibody to either the vaccine or the virus, we can tell the difference, and there are studies going on that shows that very small proportion of the Canadian population are immune, which is why we have to accelerate vaccine coverage. We don't have a, a lot of uh, underlying immunity because the proportion of the population that are infected is actually very low. And it may be higher in certain pockets of Canada, but overall in Canada, uh, the infection rates are very low, and that's why ma vaccines really matter as a safe and effective way of getting that immunity up. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Tim. That concludes our press conference for today. C'est ce qui m'a fait la conférence de presse pour aujourd'hui. Bonne journée.